I, I tried to be normal once and it just didn't work out for me. So enough of the disclaimers. Here we go. Let's go. All right. You're not well, y'all, y'all Don't blow smoke, cry, gotta keep it real No good entertainment for your bad excuses, y'all, y'all I'm a doctor, not a pop star, y'all, y'all Calling my phone, cause you're not well, y'all, y'all You want drugs, magic now, ain't go wait, yeah I'm not Don Corleone or Houdini, my girl I'm a doctor, not a pop star, yeah, yeah the subject where we're talking today other than the art of studying and sometimes you know you have to express yourself when it's time to study for a test though it is not time for self-expression it is time for you to perform and perform is what I just did for you that is Okay, that song was uh, a Justin Bieber song that I made my own words to talking about how patients demand things and are not really willing to do some work. But go back and watch it. Rewind. That's not what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about the art of studying. And with that, honestly, we are have categories of test of tests, categories where you're going to be, your knowledge is going to be tested on. And there are five categories. And the majority of subjects that you experience in school are, will fall into these categories. Perhaps you could think of more while we're talking, but right now there are five and we're going to go through each one and really explain to you how to study for the subjects that fall under those categories. And then after that, actually, I'm going to give you some tips on the day of the test tips, things that you can do even do before the test, the day of the test, and even during the test to make sure that you are successful in all your classes. Because guess what? Dr. D Nice have taken a whole lot of tests in her life, standardized tests, in, in-person tests, essay tests, you name the test, I have taken it. And we're going to learn about it today. Here we go. The first category of test that we're going to talk about is the applying information. Tests where you have to apply facts and formulas that you learn. And just simply by how I said it, you can think of classes along the lines of like your chemistry class, your physics class. These are tests where you're going to have to learn formulas and you, it's not like you could end up just regurgitating them on the test. Oh, they're not going to ask you, well, what is the, the law of momentum? Tell me the formula for momentum. Is that speed times mass? Something like that. <laughs> It's been a while. They're not just going to ask you that. They're going to actually give you the mass of something, give you the speed, and you have to have known the formula and be able to apply it to the word problem. These kind of testing, applying information, they tend to have a lot of word problems. And the way that you study for tests that involved more word problem or applying knowledge, applying information is honestly, it's practice, practice, practice. Because here's the thing. There's only a limited amount of ways they can ask the question. Momentum is momentum is momentum. A chemistry 
equation is a chemistry equation. Oxygen always has that same, um, what is it called again? Standard, what is the weight? Oh, specific, gra what are the, the, um, <laughs> Properties. What are the properties of the elements? It's been a while since I looked at the periodic table. Man. Anyway, all these things are pretty set. Okay. And when you're studying, the only thing you can really do is practice being able to recognize which formula is important right then. Am I supposed to be doing the centripetal force? Am I having to calculate the speed? Am I, am I having to put X over here and Y over there? You have to practice this. There's no way around it. And when it comes time for the test, the truth is they cannot really develop new ways of applying these formulas on the test. Typically, they're going to go with the same information that you've been practicing. They may change it to Jim had a, a dog that was running at five miles an hour instead of Bob having a cat that was running at two miles an hour. Do you see the variables, the people, the subjects of the story may change, but, and the numbers, but it's still the, in essence, on the comment section below. Hello? Hey. <laughs> Maybe. So re in regurgitating information, these are going to be classes like biology, like history. There's not a lot of analytics that have to happen. There's not a whole lot of applying formulas. All of that is not part of the testing. It really is just sitting down and memorizing the information. And, you know, here's the thing. There are going to be and okay, listen to what I'm saying here. Uh, I'm going to say it and I really want you to hear me. Understanding may come after knowing, after memorizing. Okay. And it's okay because there sometimes these principles are just hard to put together, especially if you've never really encountered like a cell, a cell membrane, a phospholipid, what, huh? What are you talking about? And it may sound like Japanese or something foreign to you, and it's okay to not fully understand it. But the more you immerse yourself into the information, that's where really homework comes in. It gives you a lot more opportunities to expose yourself to the information that it moves past memorization to a full understanding. It's okay initially to really just have it memorized. You know, what is the basic uh, living organism, the cell? <laughs> it's like, what is the energy, basic energy component, um, ATP? Where is energy made? Mitochondria? It's okay to just spew those out just off the top of your head and not fully understand how they work, where they're located. They may ask you where they're located. Just understand with some things that just those things that are regurgitation, the regurgitation type exams, it's okay to not fully understand it. Un but I will add one caveat. If you understand it, it really will make the memorizing, the being able to do well on the test better. The memorization or the understanding of things though, of those concepts really come, tend to come later, the more that you connect and engage with the information, the more you even use it. That's why in most of these science classes, they have labs where you're able to practice and see practical applications of the things you're about, you have learned. That's regurgitation. Next one is performing information. Now, these are classes like your band class, your PE class, your things, your classes where your dance class, you're going to have to get up your art class, your performance arts type things where you're going to have to really show the things that you've learned. This is your opportunity to be creative. The truth is for these tests and you worry, sometimes you worry about the grading, the grading 
often has a lot of subjective qualities to it. It's just what the teacher likes that day. And understand if you check off all the points that they say to you need to have, and I'm going to get into this later on in some general tips in preparation for the test. But for the performing things, you really make sure that you know exactly the things, the must-haves on the test that the teacher have listed. And when you incorporate it into your performing thing, it's there. If you're doing a speech class and your teacher says you must have a slamming, jamming introduction, you make sure you have that. If they say you must stand with a good posture, if you must project your voice, all of those things, you make sure you have it present. It's a performance. It's being able to, to engage people in the activity that you learned in the class. Plain and simple. So those are performing uh, classes. And only way to prepare for those kind of tests is, once again, it's practice. You're going to have to do these things over and over. If it's something that you have to do in an audience, you pull your family together and have them critique you or go over the checklist that your teacher is going to check you on. If it's in your PE class and you're going to have to be running a mile in under whatever, seven minutes, who knows, whatever it needs to do, then you start running every day. But for, 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 for performing classes, it's going to be a lot of um, just practice. Then there are the classes where you have to recognize information. And this is similar to regurgitating information. Now, you may... Okay, let me back up and say that a lot of classes may even overlap in some of the some of the the type of information that they have. But this, you know, you can go back and kind of mix and match them based on the class that you're taking. But recognizing information, this tends to be like your math class where there are patterns to how you're doing things. Like algebra, there's just a pattern. Trigonometry, there's a pattern. Geometry, there's a pattern. And if you're able to recognize the pattern, then you're going to be able to be successful on the test. Because like I said before, for most of these things, the teacher cannot reinvent uh, 2x plus 3x equals y. They can't re they can't all they can move is the numbers. All these things have been standard since Dr. D. Nice has been in high school. I graduated from high school in 1988 before I was in high school. As a matter of fact, there's a Timbuktu in Africa, which was an ancient university that had thousands of students. They were learning algebra and those kind of math. It's been around for a long time. There's nothing new that they can invent, invent to it. They All they can do is change the numbers. And if you're able to recognize the patterns that are associated by recognizing these patterns, then you'll do well. The way to study for these kind of tests, once again, is practice. Do the homework. Un recognize the patterns by doing the homework every day. We're going to go over some more tips, general tips for all the classes, how all you all could end up doing well on your school, in your school. All right. Organizing information is going to be our last one. And in organizing information, these tends to be classes like your ELA class. Back in my day, they used to call it just English, but now it's English language. What does the A stand for? I don't remember what the A stand for, but I know that's what my kids' cl English class is ELA. Whatever that means, let me know in the comment section below. But for these classes, is um, you have to read in order that you can write. Because in English classes, they're going to want expect you to write an essay. They're going to expect you to have good sentence structure. Your nouns and your verbs have to match. Your, your spelling has to be on point. All of these things have to be present. And the way you get to do that well is by reading. If you read lots of books, you'd be able to recognize proper sentence structure. And of course, practicing writing. And you're like, Dr. D. Nice, I'm just going to write for fun. Why not? Start a diary, something like that, and really write and practice. So once again, just going over all of these, organizing information, 
the way you study for these kind of tests is really reading and writing, practicing your reading and writing. Recognizing information type tests, it's practice, 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 doing those homework, doing those math problems over and over so you're able to recognize the patterns that always occur in most math problems. In classes that require performing, once again, this is practice. You're going to have to do the exercise, do the art, the the dance move, the proper posture, whatever it is that they're going to be test you, testing you on, you're going to have to practice it. In the classes that are requiring regurgitating information, it's memorization. You can use flashcards. You can writing things down helps you to memorize things. You write it down, you say it out loud. That way you're engaging all your senses in gathering that information into your brain. And then the other one I did with applying applying information, these ones again is just practice, doing those word problems, doing the homework. All right, now, that being said, general information, getting ready for the test. Here's one. When you're studying, you have to be efficient. Work smarter, not harder with studying for your test. Shut off all radios. <laughs> Y'all listen to radio? I know, I'm like aging myself here. Shut off the radio. Shut off your iPod. Shut off your iPad, your Spotify, whatever. W try practice working and doing your homework in silence. I'm going to tell you what that does. Your test is going to be silent. It's not like you're going to be able to have all your radios and things going on, all the music going on. Practice doing your work in silence. What this does, it really helps you to focus, to focus your attention and get things done. It doesn't distract your brain. I promise you. Work in silence. Practice that way so your brain doesn't get used to always having some sort of stimulation when it's trying to learn. The next one is start doing your homework on time. Don't get behind. When you get behind, you're going to have to spend a lot of time later on trying to catch up. And trust me on this one, it won't work for you. Do your homework systematically when they, when they, um, when they assign it, you do it. When they assign it, you do it. And you go back and you review it. Then the next one is know who is giving you the test. Now, that is my pro tip. <laughs> this is all, this is like, if you're into psychology, you can understand your teachers and know the type of test that they're going to ask. It just is what it is. People are humans and their humanity will be expressed in the way they ask the test. That's just how it is. You can spend time, they have office hours, you can go meet with them and ask them to review some of the homework with you so you could really get to understand them as an instructor and really get to understand the types of questions, the type of things that they lean into. They may really just love, like if it's the biology, they love cellular structure and they may put a lot of emphasis on cellular structure in their tests. So really get to know your teachers so that you could really understand the type, the psychology behind their testing, the type of questions they ask. And then last but not least, on the day of the test, listen, get some a good night's sleep the night before, eat a good meal that morning, move your body and get your blood flowing before the test. Take some deep abdominal breaths. We've gone over abdominal breaths in the past, or you can Google them and figure out how to do them. Just get some oxygen to your brain and just focus in, lock in, and get your test done. There is no time for performance anxiety. Anxiety. You can even do the Superman pose where you stand, arms, hands full, bent, a uh, fist at your hip and look off for like 20 minutes. Apparently that's supposed, not 20 minutes, two minutes. Apparently that's supposed to increase your confidence. Anyway, those are general overview on how to do well on your test. I know we spend about 30 minutes on it, but trust me, there are a lot of gems in there. I could even go in more details, but that's it. All right. <laughs> We're done. Hey, 